Despite being shut out of the World Health Organization, Taiwan has largely succeeded in containing coronavirus disease 2019 COVID-19, which had a more moderate impact than in many neighboring countries. Taiwan's handling of the outbreak has received international praise for its effectiveness in quarantining the people and by using the electronic fence to slow down the virus, despite being unable to gather WHO information due to being barred by China, and is seen as the model for other countries to learn from. The Taiwanese government integrated data from the National Healthcare System, Immigration, and Customs Authorities to aid in the identification and response to the virus. Government efforts are coordinated through the National Health Command Center NHCC, of the Taiwan Centers for Disease Control, established to aid in disaster management for epidemics following the 2004 SARS outbreak. The Journal of the American Medical Association states that Taiwan engaged in 124 discrete action items to prevent the spread of the disease, including early screening of flights from mainland China and the tracking of individual cases. On 31 December 2019, Taiwan Centers for Disease Control CDC, implemented inspection measures for inbound flights from Wuhan, China in response to reports of an unidentified outbreak. The passengers of all such flights were inspected by health officials before disembarking. Taiwan's Central News Agency reported that Luo Yi Jun, deputy director for Taiwan's Centers for Disease Control, had been reading on PTT in the early hours of New Year's Eve when a thread about an unknown disease causing pneumonia in Wuhan caught his attention. He saw a post including screenshots from a group chat with Li Wenlang. He immediately emailed colleagues and put the country on alert. Taiwan has managed, so far, to keep well ahead of the infectious curve through a combination of early response, pervasive screening, contact tracing, comprehensive testing, and the adroit use of technology. Taiwan is praised all around the globe, but how did they exactly address the pandemic COVID-19? What impacts of COVID-19 does the country of Taiwan face? How did they respond to these impacts? 1. Economic Impact Taiwan Capitalization Weighted Stock Index has decreased over 13.1% due to the coronavirus. Foreign investors have sold over 200 billion new Taiwan dollars. TAIEX has also hit a 42-month low, closing at 8,681.34 point. National Stabilization Fund decided on 19 March that it is essential to intervene in the stock market. The Taiwan-based Chunghua Institution for Economic Research CIER, on Friday lowered its forecast for the island's gross domestic product GDP, growth for 2020 to 1.03%, down from the 2.44% forecast made in December last year. The forecast came amid the COVID-19 outbreak and its impact on the global economy, said a press release from the CIER, one of Taiwan's leading think tanks. In the aviation industry, Taiwanese carrier China Airlines' direct flights to Rome have been rejected and cancelled since Italy has announced the ban on Taiwanese flights. The second-largest Taiwanese airline, Eva Air, has also postponed the launch of Milan and Phuket flights. Both Taiwanese airlines have cut numerous cross-strait destinations, leaving just three Chinese cities still served. On 19 March foreign nationals were barred from entering Taiwan, with some exceptions, such as those carrying out the term of a business contract, holding valid alien residence certificates, diplomatic credentials, or other official documentation and special permits. 2. Employment Impact According to the latest statistics from the island's Labor Department, about 14,800 employees at 588 enterprises have been put on unpaid leave as of April 15, a commonly adopted measure to cut costs when business is slow. In the week before April 15, the number of employees on unpaid leave increased by about 6,200 to the highest level since December 2009 and the number of enterprises using this policy was up by 220 to the highest level since September 2009. The most affected sectors were hotels and catering businesses, the Labor Department said. In response, lawmakers passed the Special Act on COVID-19 Prevention, Relief and Restoration, providing for a 60 billion new Taiwan dollars, 1.97 billion United States dollars special budget to help businesses and workers, and it was immediately sent to the presidential office, where President Tsai Ing-wen signed it into law.
The 19 Article Act stipulates penalties and fines for breaking quarantine, hoarding essential materials, compensation for furloughed workers and tax breaks for companies and organizations affected by the viral outbreak and those that pay employees under quarantine or on leave to care for quarantined family members. The Act is retroactive to January 15 and is to be valid until June 30 next year, except Articles 12 through 16, which took effect after the Act was ratified. 3. Face mask control measures The Taiwanese government announced the ban on the export of face masks before the epidemic had spread to many countries, which caused controversy, however, after the outbreak of the epidemic, people rushed to buy masks in many countries around the world. Incidents of face mask confiscation by the government also occurred in mainland China, the world's top face mask manufacturer. In early February 2020, the executive yuan adopted the recommendations of professors Huang Li Min and Chang Sheng Xuan of the National Taiwan University Medical School, advocating that healthy people do not need to wear masks in open spaces. On 8 February, Chen Shi Cheng, commander of the Central Epidemic Prevention Center, further stated that there was no need to wear a mask on public transportation. This caused a storm of protest. The main point of contention is that public transportation such as buses and MRT carriages are confined spaces, and viruses are transmitted more easily than in open spaces. In early April, Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen announced to donate 10 million masks to countries that suffered severely from the coronavirus pandemic. In response to the donation, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen wrote in a tweet that the European Union really appreciate d, this gesture of solidarity. U.S. National Security Council also wrote a tweet thanking Taiwan to support and collaborate with the U.S. In a press conference on 1 April, Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Hua Chunying responded to questions about the mask donations advising anyone in Taiwan who would seek to politicize the pandemic to think twice and act prudently. 4. World Health Organization Controversy The World Health Organization WHO, have listed Taiwan as part of China, which resulted in multiple countries including Italy, Vietnam, and the Philippines briefly banning flights from Taiwan in January and February 2020, despite the disease not then having reached epidemic status in Taiwan. Johns Hopkins University Coronavirus Research Center hosted an interactive map which initially listed Taiwan under the category Country Region, along with mainland China, Hong Kong, and Macau. On 10 March, Taiwan's name was switched to Taipei and Environs, a designation used by the World Health Organization. When a news organization reached out, the associate professor in charge of the project claimed they would be changing it back to Taiwan immediately. By 12 March, Taiwan was restored to the map, and the university stated that it would adhere to naming conventions developed by the United States Department of State. Although Taiwan is excluded from the World Health Organization due to opposition from China, and thus has limited access to shared scientific information and data, the country's response has been lauded in international press. On 9 April, Taiwan demanded an immediate apology from WHO leader Tedros Adhanom for making false accusations about racist remarks, claiming that the Taiwanese government and populace were slandering him based on his Ethiopian ethnicity instead of his response to the virus. The Taiwanese government and online commentators protested this accusation, noting that Taiwan is open and friendly to all races and has historically given African doctors medical training, including Ethiopian doctors. Ethiopian doctors currently resident in Taiwan were interviewed, affirming that Taiwan is not a racist country. When WHO staff was interviewed about international responses and especially Taiwan's, the Canadian physician and epidemiologist Bruce Aylward didn't respond for several seconds, saying he couldn't hear the question. The journalist offered to repeat it but he cut in, no, that's okay, let, move to another one then. I'm actually curious to talk about Taiwan as well, Tong said. Aylward then appeared to either hang up the call, or get disconnected. RTHK called Aylward back, and Tong asked if he could comment on how Taiwan has done so far in terms of containing the virus. Aylward responded, well, we've already talked about China. And when you look across all the different areas of China, they've actually all done quite a good job. With that I'd like to thank you very much for inviting us to participate," he said, ending the conversation. 
few days later, the WHO said Aylward did not answer a question on Taiwan's response but said it was working with Taiwanese health experts. It said questions of membership were up to member states, not WHO staff. The Taiwanese government said Taiwan's membership has been cut out of discussions despite its success and claims that it warned the WHO about the risk of human-to-human -human transmission of the virus in December, but was ignored. Despite its proximity to China and large human flows, Taiwan has recorded the lowest incidence rate per capita, around one in every 500,000 people. Success factors cited have included the fact that the country's vice president, Chen Qianzhen, is an epidemiologist who had obtained a doctoral degree at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, and the lessons learned from the SARS epidemic in 2003, which hit Taiwan hard. Infrastructure, including the establishment of a national health command center integrating relevant agencies, data analytics, policies aimed at keeping health care affordable, and extensive educational outreach were put in place following the SARS outbreak. Researchers at Stanford Health Policy Researcher published an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association arguing that Taiwan's action plan, which included 124 discrete actions and coordination to be implemented in the first instance, including travel bans, quarantines, surveillance steps, social distancing, had saved Taiwan from a serious epidemic. Thank you for watching. If you are new to this channel, please press the subscribe button and notification bell for more informative and entertaining videos like this. If you are already our subscriber, please comment topics for our next video and you will get a free shout out. What are the impacts of COVID-19 for the other countries? How did they respond? Here are our video suggestions for you.